You know, it wasn't in my plans for Zayd and Kibo to have a heart attack and not so tragically die during the last episode. However, I must say, it does give me a warm, fuzzy feeling whenever I think about it. It was the early hours of the morning after Zayd and Kibo's sudden death, and his sister, our matriarch Autumn's wife, Shanna Kialoha, was obviously in a somber mood. She didn't speak much of it, but Autumn knew under that strong exterior she was hurting. She didn't try to pry anything out of her, so instead, she silently held her as tightly as she could in their bed. Sage was still awake, of course, thanks to his last potion of plentiful needs Shana gave to him, getting in as much magical practice as he could, and though the mood in the house was grim, Shana was distracted, meaning that Sage had an opportunity to do something he knew his mom would be deeply upset about if she found out. Sage, you really are turning into a menace LMA, he decided to sneak past their bedroom and into the office, down to the basement, and into Shana's spellcast a lair. Somewhere he wasn't supposed to enter without her supervision, she seriously left it unlocked. Does she know who her son is? But he just couldn't help himself. He had to know what kind of spellcaster goodies Shanna was hiding down here, and once he finally saw it, he was entranced. The various plants and herbs, the altars and candles and tarot cards, the obscene amount of familiars and crystals in her collection. Holy mother, this place was like heaven. But Sage knew he was running on limited time, and he just drank up his last potion of plentiful needs. So, he headed over to Shanna's cauldron and got started with creating a batch just for himself. For the very first time, he prayed he wouldn't curse himself, because if he does, the jig was up. Shanna's little brother Voldemar Kibo had slept over at the Kiloha house. He didn't want to step back in his apartment across the street after what happened last night. He used his nephew Jasper as a distraction, fixing him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for breakfast. Luckily for him, Shanna had a solution for Voldemar's problem. With Zayden dead and Dexter leaving for Sulani with raindrop drop top, Voldemar had nowhere to live except here. She was offering him a room here in her house. He can take Rockon's and Jasper's room as soon as they move out. Voldemar was so grateful for his older sister. Though he only had just a few more days until he ages up to a young adult and goes off to college. He needed to be around his family more than anything right now. And apparently, Zayden had adopted a cat named Spatula right before his death. I guess Rami Harder and Dexter have a new pet. Shanna knew that she was going to have to keep her baby brother occupied. So she sucked down a potion of plentiful needs and watched Voldemar fiddle with the piano as Reach for the Stars ate her breakfast alongside Jasper. Our matriarch Autumn was entering her Nara Smith era, collecting fresh honey from the very angry bees she's been keeping. Yeah, maybe don't neglect them this time. Okay, time to put the beekeeping suit on. As Autumn tended to her bees and her insect farms, she thought a lot about her poor wife Shanna. Losing a brother is something Autumn knew all too well. Jacob's death destroyed her, and she almost lost her own life because of it. If she were being honest, she hadn't thought about him in a while. She'd been so preoccupied with the kids, including losing River, not to mention what went down with Clint and her move to Evergreen Harbor. Man, Clint. She hadn't thought about him in a while either. You could say she lost to brothers. Though Clint was alive and well somewhere. Or at least, Autumn hoped. She couldn't help but wonder about that promise Shan had made to her all those years ago regarding Jacob. When was her wife planning on bringing him back? Upstairs, Revenge is sweet was feeling spectacular. That parasite Zayden was dead. Her baby Jasper was healthy and happy. And she and Dexter would be leaving for Suloni within the next couple of days. Life was good. Fantastic even. She'd never felt so relieved, so positive and excited about the future. Her adoration for her son enraptured her. And her love for Dexter was all-consuming. But it felt healthy, not obsessive. It felt grown-up, not childish. It was 
was the exact opposite of how she loved Zayden, a breath of fresh air, and Sage, despite both of his mothers being awake, was testing his luck and still up to no good, he successfully made three potion of plentiful needs batches, not cursing himself once and without Shanna finding out. He he heed his way into success, everyone was keeping busy, Autumn was upgrading the treehouse with a sliding pole, Sage was reading a new spellcasting tome, Voldemar was checking on his college applications, and read between the lines went to check on Dexter, who'd been asleep for 12 hours straight, she knew he was in pain, both physically and mentally, and wanted to do everything she could to comfort him, so she woke him up, and held him, and gave him tiny kisses, and told him that she loved him and that everything was gonna be okay, and she'll keep telling him that as much as he wanted, but he wasn't in the mood for a pity party, he was in the mood for a little something else, my god, even your brother dying won't get in the way from hitting that, the insanity, or Aurora, so innocent, eating leftover birthday cake while her uncle eats her ants, just kidding, it wasn't like that, or at least just yet, they mainly cuddled, looked into each other's eyes, and held onto each other tightly. The bruises and cuts all over Dexter's body were well worth it in his eyes. He gained these marks by protecting his girlfriend. He'd never once stood up to Zayden in his entire life. And though things ended tragically, it felt damn good to finally let all of that off his chest. They'll never be able to fully resolve their issues. But at least Zayden got to hear it for himself. How much he affected Dexter growing up. That was all the closure he needed. Shanna's blood pressure began to spike, thinking about everything that happened last night all over again, Oasis went to her happy place, the outdoors, to take in the beauty of outer space and to bond with the Earth's beautiful creatures. Autumn peacefully crocheted with Sage keeping her company, feeling overjoyed as she heard little Aurora giggling as she played on the spring riders by her lonesome. And upstairs, after much consideration, rewrite history and Dexter made a decision. Let's just freaking do it. That's what Dexter suggested. He wanted to go to Solani with her and Jasper tonight and not let what happened with Zayden get in the way of their plans. He doesn't want nor need time to heal. He wants to begin their life together. He's dead. It's as simple as that. His life is about her and Jasper now. So, they headed over to the Kibo apartment for the last time to pack up everyone's things, including Voldemar's, his baby brother was set on never coming back to this apartment, and Dexter understood. Then, they got back to Shantan's house, announcing their departure, and finally, roll up your sleeves went upstairs to grab all of her items and her baby boy. The whole family stood outside to say their goodbyes to the happy couple. Oh, how Shanna was gonna miss her little brother, and Autumn was really going to miss her little sister, and Oasis would definitely miss her baby cousin. It was so fun having him around, though it was bittersweet to see their siblings leave to start their own lives. Both Autumn and Shanna were in agreement that they were proud of the Sims' rose-colored glasses and Dexter had turned into. It took a lot of trials and tribulations, not to mention cheating and lies and backstabbing for them to get to this place. But they were both the happiest the proud older sisters had ever seen them. And that's all they wanted for them. Autumn knew that her mother Alexis was looking up from hell, I mean down from heaven, and applauding her youngest baby. She really is a copy and paste of her. And Shanna knew that her parents, Lunwala and Akira Kibo, were proud of their son as well. Wherever they were, after every family member hugged and and said goodbye. Rue the day picked up baby Jasper, looked into Dexter's eyes, and they were off to Solani to begin the next chapter of their lives. Goodbye run amok, the last child of generation two, the messiest Volkov kid there was. I will miss you and your drama dearly. And now, here's a list of every single nickname I ever gave run before you walked during the entire duration of this series. 